The Pig Tribe by H. A. Bryden. Many species and varieties of swine are found in different parts of the world, most of them exhibiting strong traces of a general family resemblance, although widely sundered as to habitats and often markedly differing in outward appearance. All are omnivorous, all have the stomach simpler in type than the ruminants, and all have front or incisor teeth in the upper jaw. The two great families of swine proper are the pigs and the peccaries. There has been much discussion among scientists as to the early origin of the various breeds of domestic swine found in different parts of the world. There can be little doubt that although selective breeding has produced extraordinary differences in outward appearance, even among the domestic pigs of our own islands, the origin of the numerous tame races is to be sought in the ancestry of the wild breeds of the countries in which they are found. Darwin has some very apposite remarks on the differences to be observed in domesticated swine. Quote, the peculiar form of the skull and body in the most highly cultivated races is, end quote, he observes, quote, not characteristic of any one race but is common to all when improved up to the same standard. Thus the large-bodied, long-eared English breed with a convex back and the small-bodied, short-eared Chinese breeds with a concave back when bred to the same state of perfection nearly resemble each other in the form of the head and body. This result, it appears, is partly due to similar causes of change acting on the several races and partly to man breeding the pig for one sole purpose, namely for the greatest amount of flesh and fat, so that selection has always tended towards one and the same end. With most domestic animals, the result of selection has been divergence of character. Here it has been convergence, end quote. The true pigs. True pigs are found only in the old world, and even there in very widely different forms. Typical of these quadrupeds is the well-known wild boar, found abundantly in many parts of Europe, North Africa, Asia Minor, and Central Asia. In the British Islands, the wild boar must once have been extraordinarily plentiful, especially in Ireland, where its tame descendants still so greatly flourish. In the days of the Plantagenets, wild swine fed and sheltered in the woodlands close to London. James I hunted them near Windsor in 1617, and even down to the year 1683, these animals still had their haunts in the more secluded parts of England. Although now extinct in these islands, the wild boar is to be found plentifully at the present day in France, Germany, Austria, Russia, and Spain, Greece, Albania, and other countries of the Mediterranean. In most parts of Europe, the wild boar is shot during forest drives, but in the Caucasus and around the Black Sea, the hardy peasants lie in wait for these animals by the fruit trees on autumn nights, or wail them going to water, and shoot them single-handed. Many an old Cossack writes Mr. Clive Phillips Woolley, bears the scars of some desperate encounter with these formidable foes. In Spain, where in the old days the boar was pursued by cavaliers with spear and pike, it is still in the forests of Estremadura, followed with horse and hound, usually, says Mr. Abel Chapman, quote, during the stillness of a moonlit night, when the acorns are falling from the oaks in the magnificent Estremian woods." End quote. In India, the wild boar of Europe and North Africa is replaced by a closely allied species distinguished by a crest of long black bristles upon the neck and back, which furnishes some of the finest and most exciting sport in the world to mounted hunters armed with a sharp spear. There is not a pluckier or more fearless beast living than the boar, and as he carries long and extremely sharp tusks and never scruples to use them, he is an exceedingly dangerous opponent 
when wounded and enraged. Severe and even fatal accidents have happened in the pursuit of this determined beast of chase. When at bay, the boar is absolutely reckless of life, and although pierced and mortally wounded by the spear, will yet force himself up the shaft and with his dying effort inflict gaping wounds on the horse bearing his attacker. Indian shikaris, to illustrate the courage of the wild boar, say that he has the hardihood to drink at a river between two tigers, and Colonel R. Heber Percy mentions in the badminton volumes on, quote, big game shooting, end quote, that, quote, several cases are on record in which an old boar has beaten off a tiger and some in which the latter has been killed by a boar. The boar's extraordinary activity and sharp tusks make him no mean adversary, and his short neck makes it difficult for a tiger to seize it and give it that fatal wrench with which he likes to polish off his victims." End quote. A wild boar will stand as much as three feet at the shoulder. Some sportsmen affirm considerably more, and weigh more than 300 pounds. The finest boar's tusk known is one mentioned in Roland Ward's, quote, records of big game, end quote. This measures 11 and one half inches over the curve. It came from the Caucasus and is in the possession of Colonel Vierenhoff. It is worthy of note that while the full-grown individuals of the various species of wild swine are uniformly colored, their young are longitudinally striped and spotted. In India, besides the common boar, a tiny wild swine known as the pygmy hog is found in the Bhutan Terry and the forests of Nepal and Sikkim. This pig, which is little bigger than a fox terrier, runs in considerable troops or sounders and is said to attack intruders into its domain much in the same fearless way in which the peccary of America defends its sanctuaries. The height of this diminutive species is given as from 8 to 10 inches, the weight at 10 pounds. Wild swine are nocturnal in their habits, frequenting moist and marshy country, loving the shade of forests and making their lairs in tall grass, reed beds, and similar covert. They go far afield for their food supplies and do a great deal of damage to crops in cultivated districts. The European wild sow produces from six to ten young, and at least two litters are usually brought forth in the year. It is remarkable how quickly pigs, as well as other domesticated animals, revert to a semi-feral state of existence and develop habits suited to a fresh environment. Mr. J. Turner Turner sends us the following interesting note in connection with this trait. Quote, Diving pigs. These pigs live in an almost wild condition on certain of the islands off Florida and subsist chiefly upon the refuse fish cast away by the netsmen. To obtain this, the pigs dive underwater walking on the land at a depth of five feet below the surface, end quote. Among other Asiatic wild swine are to be mentioned the collared pig found in Java, Sumatra, and Borneo, the white-whiskered Japanese pig, the Papuan and Formosan pigs, the warty pig of Java and Borneo, the cream pig, the celebs pig, and the bearded pig of Borneo, a species distinguished by a quantity of long hair carried upon the cheeks. In the Andaman Islands, a small shaggy wild pig, standing about 20 inches at the shoulder, is found in the forests. Although distinguished from the well-known wild boar of India by certain peculiarities, there is a strong family resemblance to that well-known species in most of these various Asiatic species and races. Among the many kinds of domesticated swine found in Asia, perhaps the strongest
strangest and most curious is the Japanese masked pig. This animal is described by Darwin as having, quote, an extraordinary appearance from its short head, broad forehead and nose, great fleshy ears, and deeply furrowed skin. Not only is the face furrowed, but thick folds of skin, which are harder than the other parts, almost like the plates on the Indian rhinoceros, hang about the shoulders and rump. It is colored black with white feet and breeds true. That it has long been domesticated, there can be little doubt, and this might have been inferred even from the circumstance that its young are not longitudinally striped." End quote. In Africa, besides the European wild boar, which there extends its range to Algeria and Morocco, a little-known wild pig is the Senar boar, found in Senar, Kordofan, and the Sudan region. In the late Dr. Gray's catalog of carnivora, this wild pig is described as having a fur dense and bristly, and being in color dull olive black, varied with yellow. Perhaps this little known swine may prove to be merely a subspecies of the common wild boar of Europe and North Africa. Now that the Sudan regions have once more been opened up to Europeans, we may expect shortly to hear more of this wild swine, as well as of other rare and interesting animals. Still dealing with the true pigs, we come now to the bush pigs of Africa and Madagascar. These differ somewhat from the typical wild boars of Europe and India in the structure of the teeth, the long penciled ear tufts, a elongated snout, and other characteristics. The tusks are considerably smaller and seldom exceed six or seven inches in length. The red river hog or West African bush pig is decidedly the most striking of this group. Smaller than the bush pig of South Africa, and seldom exceeding two feet in height at the shoulder. The color of this animal is a brilliant reddish brown with tints of yellow. Noticeable streaks of white are found round the eyes and on the cheeks. The ear tufts, forehead, and limbs are blackish. More white markings are seen at the tips of the ear tufts, along the thick mane, and round the margins of the ears. The underparts are whitish gray in color. This very handsome pig runs in considerable herds and is found chiefly in forest and jungle near the banks of the various rivers in West Africa. Its range extends from Angola to Senegambia and eastwards into the continent as far as Monbutu. The well-known bush pig of South Africa, the bush vark of the Boers, is a fine species having a wide range over much of the southern and southeastern parts of the continent, extending as far north as Central Africa. In the eastern Transvaal and Swaziland, these animals attain their greatest size. An adult boar standing from 2 feet 4 inches to 2 feet 7 inches in height and weighing as much as from 150 to 170 pounds. The usual color is brownish red, the face and mane grayish, but in different specimens and at different ages, great variations are to be noticed. Pale grayish brown or mottled brown are colors often to be found. These bush pigs are formidable looking creatures with thick bristling manes, small deep set eyes, and sharp if somewhat short tusks, which they know well how to use. Among the old-fashioned boars, cured hams from these animals were, when they were more plentiful in Cape Colony, often to be found in upcountry farmhouses. The boshvark is a beast of shy nocturnal habit, and loving as it does the shade and protection of dense covert and bush, is, unless carefully sought for, not often seen by sportsmen. The herds range usually from half a dozen to as many as twenty in number. When once encountered and set up at bay, this wild swine will be found a most tough and courageous adversary, capable and willing to defend itself 
stoutly against all foes. Quote, they are, end quote, says Mr. F. Vaughn Kirby, who has had much experience in hunting these animals, quote, expert swimmers and swift of foot and can get over the roughest ground at a great pace. There is no pluckier beast in Africa than a bush pig, and even a leopard will hesitate before attacking a full-grown boar. Like all wild creatures, they have an instinctive dread of man and will always make their escape from him if possible. But if surrounded or wounded and brought to bay, they appear to accept the situation with stolid imperturbability and die fighting with rare pluck against all odds, grim and silent to the last. Face to face in the middle of a fast bush and only a Swazi stabbing a sedgy with which to kill him, I have seen an old boar, after having received nine thrusts from those terrible weapons, two of which were still fast in him, make a charge and scattered us like chaff, and in three consecutive lunges, lame one of our number for life, and disembowel two of the finest pig dogs I've ever hunted with. In such encounters, a boar inflicts terrible wounds with his teeth, as well as with his tusks. End quote. Few men care to face a warthog on foot. Another bush pig is found in Madagascar and is known as Edward's bush pig. Its habits are very similar to those of its brethren in the neighboring continent of Africa. The Babarusa. Quitting the true pigs, we now come to perhaps the very strangest and most singular of all the great tribe of swine. This is the Babarusa, that curious and grotesque creature found in the island of Celebes in the Malay archipelago. The name Barbarusa signifies pig deer. It is, of course, a misnomer, and the animal has no kinship with ever with the servine race. The Barbarusa is a wild swine having a dark, slate gray skin very sparsely covered with hair along the ridge of the spine. This skin is very extraordinarily wrinkled. The ears are much smaller than is the case with other members of the swine group, while the tail is short, straight, and lacks any semblance of tuft. The females have small tusks. In the boars, the tusks are most singularly and abnormally developed. From the upper jaw, instead of curving from the side of the lips, the tusks grow from the center of the muzzle, penetrate right through the skin, and curve backwards often till they touch the forehead. The lower tusks have also a strong curve, but are not so long as those of the upper jaw. Although thus superabundantly provided with tusks, the Barbarusa is, as regards the rest of its teeth, less well off, having only 34 against the 44 of European wild boar. In their habits, these singular pigs much resemble other wild swine, going in herds and frequenting forest, jungle, and the banks of rivers. They are excellent swimmers. The young are, unlike other wild swine in the infant state, unstriped. These animals are often found domesticated about the dwellings of native chiefs and celebs. The weight of a good male is as much as 128 pounds, height at the shoulder 27 and a half inches. The longest tusk recorded measures 17 inches over the curve. These animals are driven into nets and speared by the natives of celebs and afford excellent sport, the boars especially charging viciously at their assailants. The warthogs. If the Barbarusa of the Malay archipelago is a sufficiently bizarre looking creature, the warthog of Africa yields to none of the wild pigs in sheer downright hideousness of aspect. The warthog of South Africa, the Valkfe Bark, pig of the plains of the Boers, has long been familiar to hunters and naturalists. Standing some 30 inches in height, this wild swine is distinguished by the disproportionate size of the head, extreme length, breadth, and flatness of the front of the face and muzzle, smallish ears, huge tusks, 
and the strange wart-like protuberances from which it takes its name. Three of these wen-like growths are found on each side of the face. The tusks of the upper jaw, unlike the teeth of the true pigs, are much larger than those protruding from the lower jaw. The lower tusks seldom exceed six inches in length. Those of the upper jaw occasionally reach as much as 20 inches over the curb. A pair from Northeast Africa, Anaceli Bay, on the Abyssinian littoral, measured respectively 27 and 26 inches. Truly gigantic trophies. The skin of this wild hog is nearly naked, except upon the neck and back, where a long, coarse mane of dark, bristly hair is to be observed. Warthogs, as their Dutch name implies, in the days when game was plentiful, were often found in open country on the broad grass plains and karoos. At the present day, they are less often seen in the open. They run in small family parties, usually two or three sows and their litters. The old boars throughout a great part of the year prefer a more solitary existence. These animals, when pursued, usually betake themselves to an open earth, not of their own making, and slewing round sharply just as they enter, make their way in hind end first. They afford no great sport to the hunter and are usually secured with a rifle bullet. The flesh is fairly good eating, especially that of a young and tender specimen. Speaking generally, warthogs are nothing like such fierce and determined opponents as the wild boars of Europe and India, or even the bush pig. They will, however, charge occasionally and have been known to attack and rip up a horse. A northern species, Elian's warthog, is found in Abyssinia, Somaliland, and other parts of East Africa, where, especially in Abyssinia, it roams the mountains and their vicinity occasionally to a height of 9,000 or 10,000 feet. There is little difference between this and the southern form. Warthogs produce usually three or four young, and the sow makes her litter in a disused burrow. Unlike those of the majority of wild swine, the young of the warthog are uniformly colored, having no white stripes or spots. The peccaries. Peculiar to the American continent, the peccaries differ considerably from the wild swine of the old world. They are of small size. The dentition is not the same. The stomach is more complicated in structure and the hind feet have three instead of four toes. In general appearance, peccaries are not unlike small, dark-colored pig, well covered with bristles, and having as well a prominent mane, a deep fringe of hair beneath the throat. They are essentially forest-loving animals, roaming over large tracts of country and making considerable migrations in search of food. Two species have been distinctly identified by naturalists, the collared peccary and the white-lipped peccary. Of these, the former species is found from Texas in North America as far south as the Rio Negro in Patagonia. The habitat of the white-lipped peccary is more circumscribed, and the animal is seldom found except in that part of South and Central America lying between British Honduras and Paraguay. No members of the pig family are fiercer or more tenacious of their sanctuaries than the white-lipped peccary, which roams the dense forests of Brazil and Paraguay in large herds. A human being attacked and surrounded by a herd of these savage little creatures would indeed stand but a poor chance of his life, and many a hunter and traveler has been compelled to seek refuge in a tree and sustain some hours of siege. Of the two species, the white-lipped peccary is somewhat the larger, standing from 15 to 17 and a half inches in height. The collared peccary averages from 13 and a half to 15 and a half inches. The flesh of these wild swine is not in much repute, and unless the back gland is at once cut out, 
a freshly killed specimen will become quickly spoiled as a human food supply. Young peccaries appear to be easily tamed, fierce as is their nature in the wild state. In contrast with the abundant litters of other pigs, wild and domesticated, only one offspring is ordinarily produced at birth. In fighting, the peccary does not rip like the wild boar, but inflicts savage and severe bites. Quote, untrained dogs, end quote, says President Roosevelt. Quote, even those of a large size will speedily be killed by a single peccary, and if they venture to attack, a herd will be literally torn to shreds. A big trained dog, however, can single-handed kill a peccary, and I have known the feat performed several times. End quote. Azara, the eminent Spanish naturalist of the end of the 18th century, had considerable experience of the peccaries of Central and Southern America, where the Indians are much addicted to taming wild animals and keep both the peccary and the tapir in a state of semi-domestication. The peccary he found to be domesticated more easily than might be expected. Though so fierce in its wild state, it soon becomes troublesome from its familiarity. Mr. Schomburg, the explorer of Central America whose travels were so constantly quoted during the Venezuelan arbitration, saw much of the white-lipped species in the forests. He found the animals in large troops under the leadership of an old boar. When attacked, they were ready to surround man, dog, or jaguar and if there were no means of escape, the enemy was certain to be cut to pieces. He himself had a narrow escape from an infuriated herd, the leader of which he shot in the art of rushing at him. As the herd approached, the sound was like that of a whirlwind through the bushes. End of section 56. Recording by Tom Mack.